You ask questions, I reply, usually. In this case, today, I want to reply and give an update to how I have been liking the Wuxun, pronounced Ocean, KG805G GMRS radio. I've had the KG805G for just about a month now. I've used it off-road several times. I did a review of the radio several weeks ago, but I left out a few features that I either didn't know about or didn't care about or was just too lazy to mention. And thanks to some of the helpful and constructive comments that viewers left on that video, I want to give a quick update and go over some of those features that I didn't mention or was too lazy to mention. I'm going to keep this video as short and quick as possible because I know your time is very valuable. I know you've got a lot of important TikTok videos to be watching right now instead of this. If you missed my first review of it, I'll post a link to it here. The KG805G, the Wuxin KG805G, and Wuxin is pronounced Ocean, is made by spec by Wuxin Ocean for buy2wayradios.com, so you can only get it from buy2wayradios.com or one of their distributors. They did send me this a month or so ago for an initial review. I've kept it, I like it, and it's become the radio that I use when I'm off-road and I need something to carry around with me. This is a GMRS handheld walkie-talkie. You do need a license to use this walkie-talkie. GMRS license is not like a ham license. You just, it's more like a fishing license. You just pay the FCC 70 bucks currently, that will be going down to $35, but nobody knows when. You pay for it online, and within 24 hours, they issue you a call sign that you then must use every 15 minutes while you're transmitting. The radio claims to be five watts output on high power. We're gonna test that. The KG805G costs $89, but right now it's on sale at buy2wayradios.com for $79. As of earlier today, they were sold out. That's how popular it is. They expect to have more stock in a couple of days, so if it's sold out when you look, just check again in a couple of days. The radio does not come with this. It comes with this. This is my handy dandy SWR and power meter. There will be an affiliate link below for this SWR meter. It's cheap, it's easy to use, it measures SWR and power. So I'm gonna check the power output, which I did on the previous video. I'm gonna check the SWR, which I did not do because I'm lazy. Give you some range test uh, examples that I came up with and go over some of the features that I like about the radio. If you watched the first video, Channel mode two, two. you know that the first thing I like the most is that Wuxin lady. She sounds very nice. I tried to track her down on Facebook. I couldn't find her, I'm still looking. Some of the other features that I like about the radio is it's very simple interface. As you see, it's not covered in a bunch of buttons. Now, there may be some times when you want a radio with a bunch of buttons, but the way I'm using this radio out uh, when we're off-roading, when I'm running up and down on the trails and leading groups, I don't want a bunch of buttons, especially if I'm gonna be handing the radio to somebody else who's never used a radio before. It's just much less intimidating. It's just a very simple to use radio. It has the super heterodyne circuitry, which means it's much more sensitive, it receives better, it's just, it's better quality circuitry. It's not an SOC or a complete radio on a single little chip. Those are much cheaper, lower quality, and that's what you'll find in the lower cost, cheaper uh, kind of Chinese knockoff radios. It has the nice, easy to click push to talk button, which I mentioned in the previous video, but I like how easy that is to press and talk. My other handheld radios, it's actually harder to press and talk the push to talk button, so I like that. On the box, it says the power output is five watts. If you've ever purchased one of the cheap Chinese knockoff type radios, you may know that oftentimes they claim one number of power output and then when you put it on the tester and test it, it's actually much lower. So I tested it in the last video. I'm gonna test it again. I'm gonna put my handy power and SWR meter on here and I'm gonna set up my B-roll camera so that you can see what's going on. B-roll camera is just a fancy name for another camera. Us professionals like to use those fancy names. So I've got my uh, 
SW33 uh, power meter and SWR meter hooked up here. I'm gonna switch it to power test. I'm gonna turn the radio on. Oh, she sounds so nice. Okay, so we're on channel uh, 22. I have a small dummy load here, which is good for up to five watts. This comes with this power and SWR meter. Let's see what the power output is. 5.1 watts. 4.9 watts. Oh, I know the battery's going dead on it. I've been playing with it too long. But it did initially peak out at 5.1, 4.9, 4.8 with a low battery, right where it's supposed to be. Now I'm going to remove the dummy load. Those get hot. That is actually warm. I'm going to put the antenna on that came with the radio, and we're going to check the SWR. Oh, 7.2. That's not good. And when I first checked it, I was a little upset. So I contacted the people at buy2aradio.com and their customer service people explained to me very nicely that I was doing it wrong. I'm an idiot. They explained to me that when you're using a handheld radio, the ground plane is your hand and your body and your head. And when we put on the meter and the connectors, it moves the antenna further away from the radio, which is acting partially as the ground plane with your head, and that messes up the ground plane, that results in a higher SWR. And I confirm that by looking on uh, YouTube, and that is a thing. So there's two ways you can measure the SWR the correct way. They make metal brackets, of which this is not one of. I got this off of the Jeep. And when you measure the SWR in the proximity of the metal bracket, it turns into your ground plane so you get a more accurate reading. So you'll see with the high SWR, 7.3, as I move the ground plane, it changes and it gets closer. There it's down to five. And if you hold it just right in the way that you're supposed to. This is pathetic. Watch how he struggles. Struggles like a four-year-old trying to tie his shoelaces for the first time while we all watch and laugh at him like bad parents. What he's trying to say is that if you do it right, the antenna should have an SWR of about 1.4 to 1. Get a job, you loser. So as you can see, it's not easy to measure the SWR on a handheld radio, but when you do it right, you can get an accurate reading. So power is good, SWR is good when you measure it correctly, which is not easy on a handheld radio. So range, that's what's really important. That's what everybody wants to know about. On the video that I did testing the KG-1000G, which is a 50 watt mobile radio, I used this radio to connect to my friend Sherwood, who was 26 miles away. I wasn't sure if he would be able to hear me on this, but he was able to hear me using this radio 26 miles away. I'll put a link to that video up there. But that was direct line of sight. He was 26 miles away on top of a mountain. So I could, if I had binoculars, big or a big telescope, I literally would have been able to see him. It was perfect conditions. You really couldn't get more perfect conditions than that. So to say you can talk 26 miles on this radio is although true, it's just not realistic because it's direct line of sight and it's very rare that you would ever be talking to somebody 26 miles away with absolutely nothing between you. So using this radio, talking to another handset, I can't talk to another one of these because I've only got one, but I have a friend who shall remain unnamed, anonymous, because he's using a highly illegal UV5R on GMRS. If you want to learn more about the legalities of the UV5R on GMRS, Check out that video that I just published. So we tested it around town. Now, my town is probably different from your town. So a real world test is almost meaningless because my real world outside of my house is different from your real world outside of your house. But this will give you an idea of how well the radio works. So around town, he just drove down the street and just kept going until I couldn't hear him anymore was about six miles. It varied depending on which direction he went, but it was about six miles. Sometimes it was a little bit less, sometimes it was only three miles, but we were getting around five and six miles depending on where he went. When we were off-road, out in the desert, mostly open areas, some hills, no big trees, no buildings, no big mountains, we were easily getting eight miles, then we kind of ran out of room, so we couldn't test anymore, but eight miles is pretty good. And in that same desert, 
Going through a twisty canyon, we only got about a quarter of a mile because those radio waves can't go through mountains and hills. So as it was bouncing down the canyon, the range was severely limited, quarter of a mile. I can also use this to easily talk to two repeaters. One is 30.2 miles away, it's up on a mountain. The other one is about 52 miles away and I get good clear signal, no problems reaching that. So good radio, good range, but your mileage will vary. As I promised, I quickly, sort of, covered everything. If you have any other questions about the Wuxin KG805G, either leave a comment below or watch my original review video. I've been using the radio for a while now, so I can probably answer most questions. Remember that stupid comments will be pinned at the top for everybody to marvel at. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the trip.